Hi, my name is Stefan Liebald and in this video I want to walk you through the practical part of the tutorial that Mark oliver Pahl and I held at the IFIP IEEE International Symposium on Integrated Network Management 2019 in Washington and the title of that uh, workshop or tutorial was Data and uh, Service-Centric Orchestration of the Internet of Things. I won't go into the details of the background with the virtual state layer middleware, which is a distributed kind of orchestration system for IoT applications, but I will just walk you through the exercise. Now, um, when starting with the tutorial, we provided a virtual machine, which one could just import into VirtualBox by clicking File, Import Appliance, and then here select the, and select the downloaded um, virtual machine and then just start it. I already did that for you and we are here now inside the virtual machine. And what we see here are, first of all, all necessary software for the tutorial is placed on the desktop. So that means we have Firefox, which we will see in a second why we or for what we need that. We have Eclipse, of course, it's a coding exercise. So we use Eclipse as a development environment. We have a shortcut to all the relevant files, which are in the home folder of the virtual machine. We have a handout as PDF, which you can uh, go through. And we have a shortcut to open terminals. Now, I also already started Firefox. We also have the handout directly linked here, which is a more up-to-date version, if I have to update it. And let's start with a brief overview of what the actual idea or goal of that tutorial is. So the general idea is that using the VSL as middleware, we can easily mesh up different microservices to cooperate, collaborate and exchange data. And therefore we want to orchestrate our smart space. And in this case, we want to build a little game. And for that purpose, we built a little emulated IoT device. So this is a picture of a real device we built with real hardware, which had some LEDs and so on it. And uh, we built an emulated part of that with a user interface from uh, Java. And what we see here is we have two players. So on the left side, we have player one. And on the right side, we have player two. And each player has um, key he can press. So player one can uh, press key D on your keyboard. Player two can press J. And uh, then you have two LEDs per player, which is a green LED, which you can see here for the left player, for the right player it's this one, and the red LED here. And we have some alarm LED here in the middle. And the idea of the game that we want to build now is that we can yeah, well, play a little game. So when both players press their buttons, the green lights here light up and the game starts controlled by a different microservice so not it, it doesn't run on the emulated device but it's just uh, remotely controlled by that microservice and then one of the red leds randomly for one of the players will go on and then that player has to take his or her hand or finger off the key as fast as possible and after some more time randomly the other lamp will go on too and afterwards, the device will just measure, okay, who took his finger off faster. And this person then won the game and the red LED will be blinking. On itself, the device is rather dumb, so it uh, doesn't integrate the logic. And we have to implement that logic as external microservice. And we have a look at that in a second. So here I described the idea of the game again. And uh, during the tutorials, we will go through different steps. So first of all, we will get familiar with the service so, or with the game and then with the service programming, we will create a context model, which basically describes the interface of services or of the smart device. We have a look at that. We integrate parts of, so we already provide you a skeleton code, we integrate parts of the gateway service to finish it. So the gateway service is responsible for connecting the emulated device to the VSL middleware and other services can then use the gateway service as well gateway to control or read the state of the emulated device. 
Then we will build the orchestration service, which implements the logic of the game that, as mentioned, interacts with the gateway service to get the state, set the state of the device. It will also report the results of the game to a leaderboard service, which then displays it in a nice leaderboard list in Firefox. So it will be here in the top on this page. Currently it's blank, but once we will play the game, we will see the leaderboard here. And we will also report the relevant interactions to the VSL to a monitor service, which will then also be displayed here. So then we can easily see what happens inside the system. And last but not least, we have a brief look at access control and how access control is implemented in the VSL. And as mentioned, uh, we have some skeleton code with to-dos and in this video we'll go through all those to do to get to do's together and implement the logic. Good, so here you can find some additional information. I will tell you necessary things directly in the video. And for the remainder, I will just stay or stick on that uh, tutorial do long, uh, too long did not read, which just summarizes all the four different parts we will look at in the tutorial, so part one, two, three, and four. Good. So let's start with part one, which is basically we want to observe what happens inside the VSL. So as a summary, as mentioned, I won't go into detail, but the VSL consists of different nodes called knowledge agents, which connect to each other automatically and services can use that knowledge agents to connect to the VSL and store data in them and well, retrieve data from it and also uh, subscribe for certain addresses, for example, and then get notifications in case the data there changes. And there's knowledge agents, they automatically synchronize with each other and share which data is available on which knowledge agent. And we have a look at that in the first part. As general hint here, in this tutorial we run two knowledge agents all on the same device. But well, it's a distributed system, so actually in practice, we could also run them on two different devices, which would then find each other over the network. So we start with uh, opening a terminal, and then we can go into the tutorial bin folder, which is a binary folder, and there we already have the pre-compiled chars for all the microservices. So we use uh, Java in this case. And we have the certificates.jks files, which we also don't recover in detail in the tutorial. We have uh, everything configured with defaults and also have some nice shell scripts that automatically start these services here for us. So we need actually also a second terminal uh, because we want to start two agents and the agents don't run in the background uh, how they are implemented currently in the tutorial. So Let's start and we want to start, oh, sorry, let's first, I have a German keyboard, keyboard, so let's switch my keyboard setup to German. Okay, Java minus char and then ka.char is the char that bundles a knowledge agent. And we started with the number two, which means start knowledge agent number two using that KA2 certificate or key store that includes the certificate. So we start that and let's maximize the windows. We see some inputs, so the agent is starting up, something's happening. And now what is the inf interesting information that we can see? For example, here we see that we went through the different network interfaces of the virtual machine that we found and we found, okay, we found that interface with that IP address, which we will use now for a communication. And we also see a bit below here, we are using broadcasts over uh, UDP um, in order to, well, find other knowledge agents. As I mentioned, we won't go into detail on that. And then at the bottom, we can see, okay, all K systems are activated, so the system is running now. Good. Now we want to start a second agent. So let's start Java minus char k char one. So we start knowledge agent number one. And uh, so we don't care about the output here because uh, we only want to see, okay, now something is happening here. So now both agents are synchronizing and we are already done. 
So what can we see? Here we get a handshake request. So knowledge agent number increase the font size of it. Uh, knowledge agent number one found knowledge agent number two and sent a request to synchronize their data. Uh, the agent number two added the agent one to his connected list. And then also most importantly here, we can see a core sync handshake or a core update. So knowledge object repository is where the data is stored. So this is why it's called core update. And here you can see that KA1 sent basically all the data it stores to knowledge agent number two. And so now knowledge agent number two now is okay. On knowledge agent one, I can find those addresses where data is stored or where services are reachable. So the search node, for example, is for the type search, which we will see later on. Okay, and I think I uh, accidentally killed the knowledge agent. So let's just stop both. And start it again. And let's open a new tab and also start one of the services. So let's try to start the gateway service that connects the IoT device to the actual service. Well, let's maybe let's start the IoT device first to have a look at that. So here we can see it, we can see both players, we have LEDs and if I press the button D now, we can see that here the green LED lights up and if I press the other button, the J, then both green LEDs are on, indicating that the keys are currently pressed, but nothing much more is happening because the logic is not running as service right now. Now let's also start the gateway service, which should connect this device to the VSL, and if you run that, this actually starts the service. The service tries to connect to agent one by default. And we also saw here that we received, so we are still in agent two in that terminal. We saw that agent one sent us some new information. So it has now a new service called board, which has a node for player one, which has a red LED with a is on state and a desired state. So we'll see why we have that structure in a second and it has a trigger node. So what we can see is we have a red LED of player one, which is this here, but not much more. So the model is incomplete, which will be the next step we have a look at. So let's stop everything again. Let's stop everything again. And we can just close that, close that. And now let's have a look at that incomplete model. So if we look at the handout again, so we went through that part now. Um, yes, I missed one thing, sorry. Let's just start agent one. And uh, if we go in the tutorial bin folder, we can also start the console service, which is kind of a user interface or like a, like a terminal for the VSL. And let's also start the gateway service again. And now here in that terminal, we can uh, type ls, for example, to see, okay, these are the nodes that are currently reachable. We can say, okay, get us the value of board, which is currently, well, null. And we can also set the parameter depth to minus one, which means get us all subnodes, so not just that node, but all subnodes also. So here we see again what we received previously on agent two as uh, available data. And Yeah, so here we can nicely browse. We see the different files are still, a different path are still missing for the other LEDs and we'll complete that now. So now we can stop the services again that are running in the background. 
and we'll also stop the knowledge agent. Good. Next step is we want to complete the context models that basically describe that user interface. And for that purpose, we can just open it in the file manager. So we go in the tutorial bin folder and there we have the model folder and the model folder contains the models and the models for the gateway service are in the adaption folder. So they are of type adaption board and adaption player control. So I can just double click on both to open them. And now what is missing is currently we only have in the board node, which is the model uh, in the board model, which is the model that the gateway service uses. We only have a player one of type adaption player control. And in player control, you can see, okay, there's a red LED and a trigger node. So this is exactly what we saw in the terminal service. Let's see whether it is still here. Yeah. So here you can see this is exactly what we can see in the model now. So we have the board node, which is basically this one here. We have player one node of type adaption player control, which is then uh, of that model. So here we have a player one, which is the name of that model, here, player one of that node. And then we have a LED of type red. And if we would look up the model of the LED, which is actuator LED, we would see that one has a sub node is on and desired. And the idea is, is on is the actual state and desired is the state that we want to set. So currently the LED is off because it's set to zero. And if you want to set it to on, we would set the desired node in the gateway service to one. And the gateway service would then try to reflect that to the actual node, to the actual LED. And if this is successful, I would get a one here in case I request the actual value. Okay, so now what is missing? First of all, for the player controls, we need a second LED called green. So we can just copy that line and, ah, sorry, and name the LED green. So we have now a red LED and a green LED of the same type. We need a node called is pressed and a node called time. So let's do the time node first with the start and the end node and the default value that we store initially is zero in this case and it's of type basic number that's fine and then let's do the same again and use is pressed node or rather is pressed node and this time the is pressed node is of type derived boolean which means it is basically a number but it can only have the values zero or one like boolean true or false Okay, so let's save that and go to the board. Now we need a second player, which we just call player two. And this one is of the same type as the first player. And now we want also a LED called alarm, which is the top LED in the model. So if we scroll up to our IoT device, basically first we had uh, to uh, add the green LED for the players, which is this one here, and also the is pressed, which we can request to get the state whether that node is pressed or the key is pressed, and the trigger, which we'll see in a second why we need that. And we also needed a second player to add that, and now this LED at the top is the last thing to add. And let's scroll back here. And therefore we can just, again, copy here an LED and this should be called alarm and also the type should not actually not be actuator LED but actuator alarm which actually is of type LED. So let's save that. Now the model should be complete. We can uh, close that and we can now try to play the game. So first of all, again, we need a knowledge agent because the knowledge agent is where the different services store their data in and where they connect to. So we also start knowledge agent number one, which is the default knowledge agent in our case of the tutorial here. Then let's start the IoT device, which we see here. Let's start the gateway. 
And then we also have the monitor service and the uh, leaderboard service that we want to start and then we can start the control service that actually implements the logic. And then let's also start the console service again. And now the type ls again, I see, okay, I have that board, which is the gateway service. Again, as last time, I have the leaderboard service here. I have a node for the monitor service and I have the control service here. And if I do a param depth minus one and request the value of the um, board device, I can see, okay, now I just added all those nodes in the model and I have them also here. So here's the alarm node, which has a LED, so it has a S on and a desired node. I have the player one node once again, which now has a green LED, a red LED, it has a is pressed button and it also has a time and a trigger node and the same for player two. I can also say param scope complete, for example, this requests not only the actual values, but also the metadata. So if I repeat the same, I can see here, for example, the red is of type actuator LED and for example, the player two is of type adaption player control, which was the model that we just adapted. And if we scroll up, we can also see that the actual board here is of type adaption board. So the board gateway service or the gateway service of that type that we just edited. Good, now let's try if the game actually works. So I'm now pressing the button D and J. We can see in the top, the blue light goes on. On the left, the red LED went on, so I can take my finger off and the right LED also went on. And now my right finger was faster because that LED is blinking. And we can also have a look at the, or at Firefox here in the background. And now we see here, we actually see the high score. So player two was faster, which is the red player, which took uh, yeah, almost three seconds after the LED went on to take my finger off and uh, player one, so my other finger needed four seconds. So I'm uh, not that good, but uh, hopefully you will be faster. And here in the top, we can see the activity that shows us, okay, the control service actually did some set and uh, get operations on the board with the so requesting the time the players needed, um, setting the state of the red LEDs and so on. Good. Um, now we are at the end of part two and we will stop everything again. So let's stop the gateway service as a knowledge agent you can press control plus C in order to do that. And let's also stop all the services running in the background. So they are running as uh, screen sessions, therefore kill all the screen, just kills all the screen sessions in the background. And now let's have a look at the code. So how does the control service actually works? I've also already started Eclipse here and if you start Eclipse, you will find there are different packages. Most importantly are the board gateway package and the game control package here. And we also have the monitor, leaderboard and IoT device packages, which well contain the code for the services like the IoT device is that emulated UI for the IoT device, leaderboard and monitor are for leaderboard and monitor services that dump their output here in Firefox. And uh, then we have another helper here for the VSL helper. But most important for us is now we just played the game, but with the pre-compiled chars. The actual code that we have here is not complete. So we have to complete the gateway and the game control service too. So let's start with the board gateway. So the board gateway is, the idea there is that we want to connect the emulated or real IoT device to the VSL so that other services can access the state of that device using the board gateway over the VSL middleware. Now in the board gateway, so we always have two classes, the board gateway in this case and the board gateway handler, so a regular class and a handler class, just from naming scheme. The idea is in the regular 
in this case board gateway class, which is the main class. We do all the wiring, so we connect it to the VSL, we create a connector to the VSL. If we scroll down a bit here, we can see, okay, here we get some, um, some uh, settings, and here we create a connector that connects us to the VSL using the URL, which is in this case the default is agent number one, uh, with the certificate and the password for the certificate, and then we um, create a new uh, board gateway, which is basically this class. And if we scroll down, then in, uh, in the constructor here, we register the service using the manifest. You can see that um, ah, here. And in the manifest, we specify which is the actual model ID that we want to use, which here is adaption board slash board, which we adapted earlier. Good. What else do we do? We create a handler. So in this case, the board gateway handler. And the idea is here, the board gateway handler is responsible for actually implementing the logic. So we'll see that in a second. And then we register virtual node handlers and subscriptions. So by default, there are two different ways services can interact with the VSL. They can store data in the VSL and access data in the VSL which is a regular access, but they can also use so-called virtual nodes, which mean that a service can register a node that belongs to itself as virtual. And whenever another service tries to access the data on that node, it is not served from the VSL middleware, but it's redirected to the service that registered that virtual node. So it's a direct connection between two services, basically. And uh, subscriptions, we can also register subscription subscriptions for specific nodes. That means whenever the value of that node is changed, we get a notification and can do something. So these are just helper methods. Let's have a look what happens in register um, subscriptions first here. And here, for example, we subscribe to, the tilde here means uh, to our own servers, node player one, red is on desired, so to the desired node. And if a notification occurs, we are the register a subscriber here. If we get a notification callback on the given address, then we call the handler.setValue address with the path of an IoT device. So what does it mean? Let's have a look what the handler actually does here. Um, in the set value, it requests the value that has changed. So in this case, for example, it would be the desired value using connector.get and then the address that was changed. So if you look here, we just pass the address that was changed for the subscription or for the notification as parameter. And we can use that to get actually the changed value from the VSL. And then we create a co-op client because our IoT device is connected using co-op. And then we use the base URI that the co-op device is listening to, which we uh, pre-configured and add the key to it. So in this case, it would be, uh, for example, if you look up here, the um, co-op URL would be uh, on that IP address using that um, port, that would be the default, slash the path. And if we look at the IoT device here, we see that when setting up the, well, the emulated device, we register a bunch of resources. So for each LED and for each thing that we want to set or get from the device, we register a path. So we use the same URL and have these paths like they are defined here, player one minus green. So for example, if I want to set the green LED, it would be, would be that URL slash player one minus green, and I could do a set or get operation on that to get the state or set the state. So this is how the connection here is implemented. But for us, the most important part is just with set value, we pass it an address, which means, okay, get that address from the VSL and send it to that co-op path of the IoT device. Good. Um, Let's go back to the subscription here. So that basically what we do here is if the desired node of that red LED is changed, we want to set the red LED to the value 
that was set to desired. So in the handler, we retrieve the value based on the address and then set it to the IoT device. And the same is here, like if the trigger node changes, we want to send the value of that trigger node to the IoT device. And the same for the green LED of player one, the red LED of player two, and so on. And now what is missing here is the subscriptions for player two trigger and the alarm is on desired node. So we have to implement those here. And we can do that by just using the connector object dot subscribe. Then we need to pass the address we want to subscribe to, which is uh, our own device and then player or our own service player two slash trigger as we can see here and we need a new DSL subscriber which overrides the notification callback which is called whenever that node we, read, uh, we subscribe to is changed and here we have to call the handler dot set value because we want uh, to set the trigger value. We just pass the address along and now we need the IoT device dot path p2 trigger because we want to send the value when the trigger is changed to player to the trigger node. Then let's just copy that and do the same for the alarm is on slash desired node. Remove too much. And uh, in this case, we want to set the path of the alarm node here. Good. Um, that's it for the subscriptions. So now whenever this node changes, we send the message of the changed node to the IoT device and try to reflect the state basically to that IoT device. Now to the virtual nodes. So the idea here is, for example, for the red LED, if someone requests the is on state, we want to return the current state of the emulated device. So we don't want to return any stored or maybe outdated value that is currently stored in the VSL, but we want to have live value. So whenever someone requests that node, this is uh, forwarded to this get operation and here we want to return the result of handler.getValue of that IoT device. So what we do here is in the, in the get we just do again open a co-op client and then request from the co-op client using get the base URI and the key that was given here. So in this case the path p1 red and then we get the response text and just create a new VSL node using the connector dot. Uh, so values inside the VSL are always exchanged using VSL nodes and we can create one using connector dot get node factory dot create immutable leaf and then just pass the string as actual value inside that. So whatever we retrieve from the emulator device, we put it in here. Good. Um, the same is for example for the time, if you want to request the time, which is how long did the player take or need to take his finger off after the red LED went on. Uh, we also want to have live value there, so it's also done as a virtual node and so on. And now we have to do the same for the player 2 time, player 2 is pressed and alarm is on nodes, so we can just copy that. and. Let's do it for the player two first. So player two slash time node. So whenever this node of the gateway service is called using a get request, this method should be called. So which is a handler dot get value. And here we want to return the value of P2 time. Let's repeat that for the is pressed value or node. So important that you don't do any typos and path pressed, okay, it's just called pressed and of player two. 
And last but not least, we want to have the state or read the state of the alarm is on node. And if we do that, we can just also again, let's copy that. The alarm is on node and here we want to get the state of the alarm. Okay, good, I think that's it already. And now we implemented the logic for the gateway. So we had or we implemented the subscriptions and the virtual node handlers for the gateway. And now we come to the game control logic where actually the logic is implemented. So that's here in the game control service. In the game control service, we did the wiring that's already done. And in the game control service handler now, we have to implement the logic. So what we do here is we start a background service or a background thread that is scheduled to run every 500 milliseconds. And in that loop, now we want to implement the actual logic. So what we do is, first of all, we need the address of the gateway. So this is an independent service running independently from the gateway service and can search for the gateway service using the VSL type search. So we know the type of the VSL uh, of the gateway service. And here in that back thread, basically, we should only continue if we found the board address. So in the beginning, the board address is null, it's not found, and we just return. So what we need to do here is that we need, we can always, always have a look at the hints here. What we need is we need all addresses of the specific type. And here we know, okay, the type for gateway service is slash adaption slash board. So we want all addresses that have that type, which will in our case only be one address in case it is running or no address if it is running. Now, that basically means if the addresses dot size is larger than zero, we found at least one or probably exactly one gateway service. And we can set the board address to the first value or first address that we found. So this basically, this type search, this first address will basically just look like um, slash ka1 slash board. So this will be the address that we have here if the board gateway is running. <laughs> Okay, so if it's null, we return. If we found it, we set it to an actual string, so it's no longer null, so we continue with the loop. The next thing we want to do is that we want to read the state. So basically, do the players currently press their keys, which we can do using the connector.get and then the board address, which we just found, so which is ka1 slash board slash player1 slash is pressed and the same for player two. So these are just the nodes that we implemented in the context model and we also implemented those as virtual node. So when we request that value, we actually directly query the gateway service, which queries the emulated device and returns the current state of the value here. And well, we usually only have uh, strings as VSL node values, so we can use the get value to get the string and we can use the VSL helper dot parse boolean method to parse that string into a boolean. And then we continue if both player press the, currently press their keys. And if only one or none of the players presses their keys, we just again return and continue, uh, check again 500 milliseconds later in the next loop go through. So in case both players are pressing their keys concurrently, we start the game. And now we have to prepare the device for the game. So that means uh, in theory, the LEDs could be uh, set differently and so on. So what we need to do here is we need to set the LEDs, well, the red LEDs on, that, has, uh, that means we can use the uh, connector punct set. So we need to set them to off, sorry. And then we can use the board address plus slash player one slash red slash is on slash desired because we would like to change the node 
and then we need to pass the value that we want to set which we can get using connector dot get node factory dot create immutable leaf and pass the string in here and here it just pass a zero so that means we want to set the desired node to zero so we want to disable it now as a hint here what we can also use is not connector dot set but set and report and we can just use that method here and what set and report does is actually you can look at that it uses a monitor service we saw earlier so set and report and we also have a get and report when we call it with the address and the value we want to set we take the time execute the operation and uh, take the time again so we measure how long does the set operation of that value actually need and then report that to the monitor using that helper method which checks if there is a monitor so i think that was here so we do the type search looking looking for the type of the monitor service and we found that we report the data in a special format suite and then we will see it in firefox as formatted here so this is basically everything we set using the set and report or get and report appears here in firefox good then let's go back to our game logic so we also need to set the value of player 2 the red led we want to set it to off and we want to set the alarm to on so there is okay so the alarm is the blue led in the top and we want to set that to on to indicate okay the game now started so that you actually see the game is now running if you just play the game then we wait for a random delay and then we trigger one of the players randomly so we say okay trigger player one for example player prefixes is just defined here it's either uh, or it's an array which contains either either slash player one or slash player two and with that random here we just decide okay which of those to trigger first and now we need to trigger him so we can just use um, we can just use a set and report board address plus player prefix trigger one and set the trigger to the value one. So that means the gateway service will send the trigger signal of the value one to the IoT device and the IoT device will turn on the red LED of that player. The player has to take his finger off and the device will measure the time between receiving the trigger and the player took his finger off and then you can later request that value. Now we do the same again. So we get another random delay, we wait some time and we then trigger the other player and the other player is just, we can use that one minus trigger one. And we just trigger him too. Now we have to wait a bit because, uh, well, players might be a bit faster or slower. So we just are in the loop here that is uh, continues as long as at least one player still presses his key. And we just wait for some time and then repeat. And what we need here is we need to get the current state of the keys and set them to the player one pressed and player two pressed value so that we actually exit that loop once no button is pressed anymore. So we can do that using the player one pressed as VSL, VSL helper dot parse boolean as here and then you just use a connector dot get board address and then player one is pressed or um, player two is pressed. Just set those to those values and in case none of them is pressed anymore the while loop will exit so we continue here we initialize the times of both players that they needed with uh, a few millions i guess and now we need to actually read the real time so how long did both players need and we can do that by using 
get and report the address of player one of the time node and parse the value as long because we want to have it as long as not a string and we can do the same for player two we have the address of player two now we've got the times of both players here we calculate whether player one is a winner or player two is a winner this could be the case that both players actually won the game because they were equally fast and then we continue here with step number seven and what we need to do here is we need to set the led of the losing winner to zero so turn it off only keep the winning players led on to indicate okay who actually won the game you can do that by just using if player one so if player one is not a winner set report his address to zero or his red led desired not to zero and the same for player two so whoever did not win uh, we turn the red led off then here we actually have to you can have a look at that if you want to later here we just report the results to the high core high score or leaderboard service so we know the type of that service we can just um, report the times here so we only report the time if the time is lower than 100 seconds or 100,000 milliseconds because otherwise we assume okay the player cheated because if you take the finger off the device before it actually your LED lights up you return a few million as a result or well, the IoT device returns that. But and now last but not least we want to blink the LED of the winner for some seconds to indicate well yeah you won and uh, let's celebrate that we can just do that using a while loop so initialize a counter with zero and increment the counter until we arrive at some value like 15 sleep some time and then if the player if player one is a winner then here depending on the counter set the led to one or to zero so on off on off on off and we do the same for player two just set the desired node of the red LED to 0 or to 1. And last but not least, when we are done with that part, we want to turn the alarm LED off to indicate, okay, the game is now over. We can do that by setting the address of the desired node of the alarm to 0. And now we are at the end of that loop that runs every 500 milliseconds. And we can start the next round of the game. So let's try it out so now we should have implemented all the logic let's start our knowledge agent again and we also need to start the leaderboard service the gateway service ah. sorry we don't want to start the we want to start the gateway service from the eclipse where we just uh, finished it so we start the leaderboard service, we start the monitor, and we start the IoT device. And then we can right click on the board gateway and just click run as Java application. And we can, it should be starting soon. Let's give it a few seconds. Here, now it's running. and. Do the same for the game control service, run as Java application. And now it's also starting and it's running and here's some debug output from a co-op and let's go to the game and also Firefox and let's try whether it works. So yeah, have a look, especially at the top here where you can see the activity. So when the game logic service or control service actually does some set and get operation on a certain path. So this is just from last round. Um, if you press D now, okay, the green LED of the left side, player one is on, press the second key, the game is starting, we see the operations in the top. We wait some time. Okay, now the first player was triggered, as we can see in the top. Second player was triggered, I take my fingers off, and well, we read the times here and set the node of the player one to zero. So that means player two was faster. We can also see that here. So here we can see the last players on the left. We are, we can see the fastest players. 
So last two players, player two was 2400 milliseconds and player one was uh, well, quite slow with five seconds of time. And in the end we set the alarm note to off, which is here. So cool, so we implemented that service and have, um, um, mesh, meshed up different, mi um, sorry, meshed up different microservices. So we had the monitor service, which basically gives us the output here at the top. We had the leaderboard service, which shows us, okay, the current high score, which is saved in a database and the last players. We had the gateway service that connected that IoT application here to the VSL, so that the game control service that has no user file interface at all, read the values or set the values or the state of the IoT device using the gateway service and also use a monitor service to report his activity or actions and also the high score or leaderboard service to report the results of the game. So if you look at the, our handout, we went through all these steps here and played the game. Last but not least, we are finished here. We can stop the services. Last but not least, we want to have a brief look at security. So let's just kill everything again. And now we start the knowledge agent. We start, we start the monitor service and we start the console service. And we set the Def to minus one, so we get all nodes and we get the value of the values of the monitor node. And we can see, okay, we read some kind of secret key here, and well, I mean, it's likely that we shouldn't be allowed to read a secret key, and we can also try to set the value of the secret key to new key, and get it again, and can see, okay, we actually also changed the service. Ah, sorry, there's one more thing. I did just a mistake. I used the system certificate here. That means I have root access. So this way clear if I have root access, I can change that value. So let's quit the console service and let's use the leaderboard right access rights. So now you can see here in the bottom left, I have the access rights of the leaderboard. And with the leaderboard, I actually Let's just request the secret key value. I actually shouldn't be able to read that value because uh, if I have root access, okay, I should be fine. I can do that. If I have the rights of the monitor service, I should be allowed to read that value, but not with the access rights of the leaderboard service because why should the leaderboard service be allowed to read any value of the monitor service? So we have to fix that, which is rather simple. So we can kill all the screen again. We can have a look at the model of the monitor service, which is of type logic monitor. And now here we can see the secret keynote and the secret keynote is of type basic text and not much more. What we can do is we use that line that is commented out here and remove that line. Now we have all the text reader is an empty string and writers is an empty string. So in the model, we define who can read or write that value. And uh, you need, in this case, empty string means only the service that initiates or initializes that model is allowed to read or write that service or the root certificate or system certificate. And this means if we save that now and we restart the knowledge agent and the monitor service, and go in again using the console service, using the leaderboard certificate. Now if we try to get or read the value of the secret key and we press enter, then we get an exception here that we cannot read the value at that node because, well, we are not allowed to read that value. Good. Um, we can also try to set that value to 
new key two. And again, we get an exception that tells us, okay, could not set a remote merge, error was, can't write at that node, so we don't have the write access anymore. Good, so now you also saw a bit of the features or security features of the VSL, and as mentioned, this walkthrough was mainly focused on walking you through the actual solution. So you might, if you were completely new to the VSL and uh, didn't have the lectures uh, that belong to it, that probably wasn't really um, an in-depth course for you. But if you participated in the course or in the tutorial, this should show you the nice solution in the end. Good. I hope you were able to follow me and hope you also had fun with the tutorial. I will link the virtual machine below the video so you can download it at any time and try to well redo the exercise or the tutorial. Bye!